Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Uh, we're going to continue on the hash calculator today. Um, I discovered a couple of problems with it um, after I was finished the last time and then another problem while investigating those. So we've got to go through those first. The first thing I noticed, which I should have noticed while I was testing it um, last time, was something sort of odd that happens when you load the file. So let's take a look at that. Um, so when you run it, it loads hello2 into bank1, and then if you go to the monitor and you look at what's in bank1, at the location we load it, there's nothing there. Okay, that's interesting. And it's flashing like, oh, I've got to attach the right disk, that's right. I had to restart everything after a, uh, after a power outage, so that's why this isn't already attached to things. Okay. I really don't like the way the disk interface works here, but anyway. Come on. So, I hate a disk interface that requires you to click through folders um, and not just type what you want. That's pretty aggravating. Uh, if this takes much longer, I'm going to stop and start over. I guess I can go one, one folder at a time. It can handle that. Okay, there's our disk for testing. It's got hello and hello2 on it. Alright, so let's try running that again. Okay, no error that time. So now we can look at 400 in bank 1, which is where we load the file. And I didn't even notice this last time, but if you look, you'll see our file contains hello world, and we're missing the H and the E. Now the reason for that is that when, um, well, it's because I saved the file with the the vice um, monitor b save command, which just saves raw bytes to the disk. Um, normally, in in Commodore, a program file gets saved with the first two bytes being the load address of the program. So those bytes don't get loaded into memory; they get used as the location to load the program into memory. So when we when the Commodore routine loads the file, it assumes those two, the H and the E, are the load address. Now it ignores them because that's that's how I set up the routine that we load it with. I said you know, don't load it there. Load it at 400 in bank one, but it's still skipping those two bytes because it just assumes the first two bytes are the load address. So that brings us to kind of a well. I should mention there are other file types um, back then. Um, in, in the Commodore world, also in the DOS world, you tended it, it was more common to have file types where different types of files were used for different things and they might be saved differently on the disk. Um, if we look at one of these books, let's look at this is the you know, this is the 1571 drive manual um, internals. Um, there are program files, which is just kind of the normal type that get loaded, like I was saying, get loaded. The, the first two bytes on the disk refer to the load address. There are sequential files, which I don't think do that, which are typically used just for streams of data. There's the user file type, which is just kind of a, a default type for other, other things. There's relative, which I'm pretty sure is stored differently on the disk to where it's stored more in blocks. Um, it's supposed to be used more for databases and things like that where you're loading in sectors rather than a file. Um, and then the DEL type just means that file's been deleted. So you have these different file types on the disk and it treats each one a little bit differently when it comes to loading a file. So that brings us to the question, if, if I say, okay, here's the hash for this file, 
do we want that hash to be the hash for the, the raw data as it appears on the disk, which would include those two bytes, or do we want it to refer to the file as it gets loaded into memory? I think you could argue either way, um, so I'm just going to choose one. I'm just going to say, okay, it's this, this refers to the file as it loads into memory. So basically that just means I need to save it differently with the monitor um, if I want to fix that. You know, when, as, we, as we go through here and test, I, mean, I need to save with the save command instead of the be save command so that it saves it with the load address at the beginning, which is what the Commodore routines will expect. Um, so that's that's what we're going to do. It's, it's fine as it is. It's just a test file anyway. It just says LLO world instead of hello world. So that's okay. But I understand why that why that happened now. When I saw that when I was watching the video to make sure the video was okay. I thought, wait a second. Where's the H and the E? All right. So I just have to keep that in mind for creating test files from now on. Now the next thing is I said at the end of the last video it looked like even though our file is only 11, or in this case, 9 bytes long, it was padding an extra block on the end, which isn't necessary. It doesn't need to pad unless it needs that space for the padding. And I got to looking at this and said, yeah, I've, I've got a mistake right here, because what I do, and I, I just added these comments to make it more clear, we take the length of of the data after we've loaded it in we've got that in length and, and we've got that in a two byte value at length and so we take the bottom byte of that the low byte and and it with um, 63 to get the length modulo 64 to say okay within each 64 byte section how many bytes do we have or within the last 64 byte section of this how many bytes do we have and then we want to subtract that from 55 and I won't walk through the whole reasoning of why 55 because I did that the last excuse me did that the last time but to subtract it from 55 we store store that in a temporary location load the accumulator with 55 set the carry and then subtract that value from 55 the problem is then I said branch of carry clear which is backwards when you subtract the reason you set the carry is the carry basically becomes a, a borrow bit then. And if the carry gets cleared, that means it had to borrow, which means the thing you subtracted was more than the accumulator. If the thing you subtracted was less than the accumulator, then the carry will stay set. So the carry flag tells you, is the thing more than the accumulator or less than the accumulator? And if it's the same, I'd have to check the manual to see what it is. But so there may still be an issue after this. But basically, I said branch in, in this branch branches past the part that adds the padding. So we want to branch past that if temp one is less than fifty five, and instead we're branching past it if it's more than fifty five. If if the carry bit got borrowed, so we just need to change that to branch if carry set, saying if the carry is still set temp one was less than 55 and it didn't get and it didn't get borrowed and so we don't want to add any more padding so basically I just had that backwards because of that now the next problem which I noticed while I was figuring that out was right here I add these 70 bytes and I added the question mark to say why 70 well we're adding 64 for the padding to say okay we need to put another block on here why 70? Well, 70 because our length goes on the end in, a, in an 8-byte value, but we're never going to need more than 2 bytes for the length because our length on our, on our system can't be more than 16 bits. And so the first 6 bytes of that length are always going to be zeros. And so I said, well, okay, well, let's just, instead of adding 64 bytes of padding, let's just go ahead and add 70 bytes of padding. The problem is we also need that extra 6 bytes of length, of, we also need those six zero bytes if we're not adding another block of padding. So I can't just do it here because we're going to branch past that if we're not padding on another block. So we need to add 60, basically we need to add 64 here. And then we need to add six regardless of whether um, 
regardless of whether we have added the 64. Um, another possibility would probably be to come up here somewhere and add the 6 and then change this number, but I don't think that would gain us anything except some confusion. Um, so we're going to change this. We'll add 64 bytes if we need to pad it out. And then jump to here if we branched, not to here. And then here we need to add 6. So let's see. Question is. Subtract it from 55, okay. I could even still have a mistake here because I'm thinking now uh, it's been I've, it's been a whole week since I worked on this and now I'm, I'm a little hazy on what exactly I was doing here and I didn't comment it probably quite enough to um, quite enough to have it clear um, load A with the file end Okay, so that's just getting our length. Basically, what we're trying to figure out at this point, before we put A into X, we want A to have the number of zeros that we want to add. So, yeah, okay, so that's okay. I'm, I was trying to think, are we changing the length here? Or are we just, yeah, we're just changing the padding value. So I just want to make sure that when we get here, we've subtracted it from 20, we've subtracted 50, we've subtracted it from 55. which tells us, right, it tells us, okay, then we need, to, we need to add zeros up to 55, and then possibly another 64 if, okay. And so then we just need to, right here, if we branched ahead, clear carry, and add 6. Six for length. These will be the length zeros, and then X has the padding length. I'll change that. Yeah. All right. And then that goes ahead and add pads on that many zeros. Pads on zeros for what for the value in X for the number of it loops on X and adds zeros to the end. All right. So that is pad message now. Okay, we need one more thing here at the end. End at the beginning, actually. Um, this is going to act on bank one. That's why we're going to put this, we're going to copy this routine into the 200 block because it, it, it'll have access, that shared memory between bank zero and bank one, and so it'll have access there to work on bank one. So at the beginning, it needs to switch to bank one, and at the end, it needs to switch back to bank zero. Um, so at the beginning here, what we need to do is load A with, or load, well, we'll load A from FF00. That gets our current MMU configuration. And then, or that with, to set the 6-bit, set bit 6, and that turns, that switches you into bank 1, store it back into FF00. So whatever bank we happen to be in at the beginning of this, um, we don't want to change other things about it, we just want to set that bit. And at the end then, 
we can do the same thing except we turn this around and it with one zero one 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 to clear bit six for bank zero. Okay. Now, if you're not, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there, this is all. This is called bit masking. I think I did a video on this way back when, but it's it's binary stuff um, that when you when you OR with a value, you're setting all the bits that are that are set to one. When you AND with a value, you're clearing all the bits that are set to zero. Um, and so that's all we're doing there. All right. So this whole thing, this whole pad message thing, needs to get copied into the available space we have at 200. Now there's 160 bytes there that's available that nothing else messes with under normal circumstances. Well, I think basic messes with it, but I mean the kernel, the interrupt routines, none of that stuff messes with it. So it's safe to use in our program here. Um, and so the question then is, is pad message going to fit? We've got to find out if it fits. So let's go here and assemble. You know, because if it doesn't fit, we've got to find a way to make it smaller, basically, is what it comes down to. Um, all right, assembled, no problems there. Load it in. All right, let's disassemble here. If we look at the code, or if we look at the code here, we got a few jumps at the beginning, a bunch of jumps, then we get to the file name, hello2, and then pad message. So it should be pretty easy to find where pad message starts. Okay, there's all our jumps and breaks, and then here's hello2, and then here's where pad message starts. We've got our, where we set our bank. Okay, so Pad message starts at 13.1d then. All right, so that's the that's the start of it. I'm going to switch over here. Put 13.1d. Go back. All right. So if we keep disassembling, we're looking for the the end of pad message. So we're going down through. We're looking for the return, the RTS at the end of pad message. Don't see it yet. Okay, there it is. So there's our setting the bank back and then the return. So it ends at 1377. Okay. So I'll come back over here. 13, we'll say 1378, So because we want to subtract and find out how many bytes long it is. So we'll subtract the next byte from it. I'm going to do this in Perl just because it's quick. Say these are hex values. 91 bytes. Okay, so we don't have a problem with length because we have 160 bytes available from 200 up to 2A0. Um, 161, I think. Um, so we don't have any problem with, with it fitting. Alright, so that's good news. We don't have to... Th this routine pad message only runs once for every file that we work on, so this isn't something we have to go out of our way to try to make terribly short. Um, so as long as it fits, it's fine. Okay, so pad message needs to get copied to 200 and then run at 200. So how do we do that? Well, let's put let's put copy part right there. So all we want to do is copy from copy part to the return to 200 and just to make this a little simpler let's put a break after the return a break is zero in, in hexadecimal and so it'll be easy to go well no that won't be sorry that won't be easy to go to um, we do have to be a little bit careful because like I was just thinking well I'll put a break here because a break translates to zero zero but there's a zero zero right there too, so we can't just copy to, to zero. we can't just copy to zero zero. What we can do is we already figured out we've got ninety one bytes. We can just copy ninety one bytes, and if we copy a few extra, it doesn't even hurt either. So let's see how we're going to do this. Now 
at this point we aren't in bank one yet. At this point we're still in bank zero. We're just copying this chunk of memory from wherever copy part starts and we don't care where it starts. And it's probably going to move around as we change other things, but that's fine because we're using an assembler. So we just want to copy copy part to 200. Okay, so that's actually pretty simple. So we'll load X with 91, that's the number of bytes we want to copy. So let's make it 92 just to be safe. Um, and then we'll start a loop. Load A from copy part, comma X. Store it into 200 comma X. And then decrement X, or let's see, well, we also, well, okay, let's do it this way. Because we, we want it to copy when X is 0, too, so let's not do it that way. Increment X, compare X to 91, or 92, range of not equal, back up to there. Okay, so... This is going to, starting with zero, starting with x equal to zero, this will load a from copy part whatever, whatever x is, store that into 200, increment x, and it'll keep doing that until x gets to 92, to the 92nd byte. So that should copy this whole thing to 200. Okay. So let's just do that before we go any further with this. This will just copy from copy part. Now it's not going to copy the entirety of pad message because we don't need to copy this part. We just need to copy you know, from here on down. Copy that to 200. Now I don't know... Let's see. Yeah, it's probably going to... The one thing this space is used for at 200 is it's, it's the input buffer for basic and the monitor. So as soon as the monitor runs again, it's probably going to clobber a little bit of what we put here. But, you know, that's going to be fine for our program. It's just going to, it's going to mess up our debugging a little bit. But we'll see what happens with it. It may not, it may not interfere with it. Um, okay, so assemble. run it, loads it, breaks out at 13 to C. So first of all, let's make sure that's the break that we were looking for. Yes, because there's our compare to 91, just FC and X decimal, and then it broke out right there. It always, one thing you have to remember is that the, at least the internal monitor, the Commodore monitor, always shows you the address that's two bytes past the break. I don't know why that is. It has something to do with if you re-enter the code that, that helps it figure out where it needs to restart. But anyway, we broke out at the right point. And so now the question is, what do we have at 200? And it looks like we have the right stuff. If we start disassembling at 200, this looks like copy part. Sets the bank, starts doing the stuff. Okay. Now, if we keep going from 200, we should eventually see, yeah, there's our return. Okay, so it looks pretty good. It looks like a copied copy part into the right place, into 200, and it got the whole thing. All right. So now, take out that break. After it copies copy part into place, it needs to run copy part, right? So that copy part can switch banks, do the copy or do the. You can switch banks, do the met, do the padding, and then switch back um, from the bank. And so, what we want to do then is jump to 200. Now, the reason I'm going to jump instead of JSR is that way when this gets done down here and hits this return it can go ahead and return to whatever called pad message 
we don't need to return back to pad message and then return back to something else. And so copy part is sort of like an internal function of pad message if you think of it in C terms or, some, or something like that. Um, it's not really a separate routine and that's why I'm keeping it in the same zone just to um, just to be clearer about that. that this is really one routine, it just has this little section at the beginning of itself to copy itself to 200 and then run itself at 200. Okay. Alright, so that should serve to pad our message then. Of course we don't know that our, all our message padding stuff works correctly, but we'll get to that now. So, let's assemble, load it, Okay, we broke out back up where you'd expect to at 13OB. So now the question is, let's just check and make sure we should still have, yeah, we should still have pad message copy part being put in the right place. So now the question is, did it, did it do the job? So I'm going to come over here. It might help to expand this a little bit. Whenever I do this, I forget to shrink it later, and then you can't see something later in the video, so I'll try to remember. Um, so, in this monitor, what do we have, what do we have at, okay, so there's our loaded in data, and, okay, I think it worked. If you look, okay, if you remember how we have, how the padding works. Um, let's go over here, padding, okay, each byte is 64 bits, or, well, each byte is 60, each block, is, sorry, each block is 64 bytes, 512 bits, so our, our message padding routine is supposed to figure out, okay, how many 64 byte blocks are we dealing with here? Do we need to add another one on the end for padding? It puts a one bit, which means eight zero in hexadecimal, right after our original message. And so that's what you see here, this 80 after the, after the 44 for D. You see this 80 right here, that's our one bit that always has to come right after the message. And then you've got padded out zeros until you get to the last byte of 64 and there's 9 which refers to the length and the length is 9 because of the HE getting chopped off of hello world so it's a 9 byte message you get a length of 9 at the end and you get a single 64 byte block so that worked um, okay so now the next thing to do would be to test this with a few different files. So let's come back over here to the monitor and let's save let's save hello 3 or well let's call this one hello 60 and make it 60 bytes long. Okay, it's going to go on device 8 it's going to start at, we'll just use our program, we'll start at 1360 and go up to 133F. That'll be 60, but that'll be 60, well that'd be 64. Um, F E D C B, that should be 60. And then let's, because that one should require padding, even though it's shorter than 64, there's you know, not room for the padding, and so it should add on another block to create the padding. Now let's go with a longer one, let's say 70, and so that should go up to 13, 4, 6. Should be 70 bytes. Okay. Um, let's come over here. I guess I don't remember the monitor route. I'd have to I'd have to check the manual for the monitor routines for the disk. Okay, so there's our hello 60 and hello 70. And 
then we just need to come back to our code change the file name eventually we'll add a, an interface so that you can type in the file name um, in the program itself so for now we'll just keep it simple and put it in the program so loading the new ver new new version of our program running it searching for hello six why is it hello six oh 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 sorry I hard coded the length of the file name too not just the name so I gotta come down here there's the length so that'll all be that'll all be programmable once we add the interface so that it can figure out the file name from what you type in. All right, assemble again. All right, searching for hello 60 loading break. All right, let's see what we've got at 400. Okay, yep, it went. Looks like it worked because it, here's, well, I can't highlight on this, but 64 bytes, I, I guess I can do it over here. Bank, I have one. Okay, yeah, I can do it here. Maybe it's easier to see because I can highlight things. Um, here's the first 64 bytes. Okay of the program that we just loaded in and or the or the file I guess I should call it that we just loaded in or well yeah and it's 60 bytes long so here's the actual file that we loaded in okay. here's the one bit and then it figured out I don't have room right here to pad so I've got to add another 64 byte block and it ends here and so there's our length. So 3C, which is 60, is the length. Let's see. So the length, whatever the length of the of the original file is, gets put at the end of that last block, and it padded out correctly and put it here rather than sticking it right here. Even though there's room for it, you have to always have a six byte length on the end, even though we're never or, sorry, an eight byte length on the end even though we're never going to use all eight bytes, that's just what the standard requires. All right, let's go, let's do 70. Uh, I've got to come back, probably need to come back to the, the bank, the bank command in the, in the vice monitor is different from the bank command in basic in the Commodore um, in the vice monitor it really just controls which one are you looking at I don't, I don't think it changes which one the computer is necessarily looking at so you have to be it was a little confusing at first till I figured that out um, so let's go to 1300 it loads hello 70 breaks out and so now I'm going to go back to bank looking at bank 1 and at 400. Okay, so there is our program. I must have saved the, the length of that one a little bit wrong because that's not 70, that's 71. Let's see, 64, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, that's 71 bytes. Um, go back to the command I used to save that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's 71 bytes, not 70. Okay, so that's fine. Um, so 71 bytes of file, then the one bit that's always going to be there, and then at the end here, 71 is the length. Okay. Now, let's make one more test file that is at least 256 bytes long so that we can make sure that a 2-byte length works. Um, in fact, let's do one just under 256 and then one over 256 to make sure they both work correctly. So, we'll call this one 250 and it will go up to 
13 F let's see F F would be 55 or no F F would be 56 so F F8 be 250? No. no. F2 would be 250. Well, anyway, let's save one that long. Um, F2. Uh, oh, just F2. That's 242. What am I not thinking right? No, dumb. Dummy, dummy, dummy. Um, That's not 250. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Scratch is the Commodore um, command for deleting a file. 50. Yes. Kind of wish it was still. Kind of wish it was still called that. You know? Instead of remove or delete, Scratch just sounds much cooler. Um. Okay, let's try this again. Should be FA. Should be 250 bytes. And then 260 would be 1404. I'm probably adding one more, one too many. This is probably going to be 251 and 261 because I'm not thinking quite right. But anyway, it's either side of the 256 break on things. So we'll see what that does. Um, if we come over here, we should see two blocks on that last one, yeah. See, so one is showing on, in the Commodore directory command, you see on the left is the number of blocks in each, in each file. So all the first ones fit within a single 256-byte block. Hello 260 does not, it, and so you see two blocks there. So that's just telling you how many blocks it takes to store them on the disk. Um, okay. So back to our code. We want to do 260, which is one character longer, so I've got to go and change that. Okay. Assemble it. Load it. Run it. Okay, um, it doesn't seem to have changed anything. Maybe I'm maybe I'm in the wrong RAM bank. Nope. Hello to Hello to sixty. I'm not thinking right about something. I'm not sure what it is, but no, I did hello seventy again. Did I did I not load something or not save something? I did that a while back and it was aggravating. 260. Why did I do 260? Or let's do 250 first anyway. Assemble. Oh, because I'm in bank. Because I loaded it into bank one. That's that's what I said. I'm the bank the bank command here gets a little confusing because I just loaded the program into bank one, but then ran it in bank zero, I believe, or something like that. Um, so anyway. Load it. We're back in the default CPU bank. Okay, now back to rank RAM bank one, and look at 400. And there's nothing there. Why is there nothing there? I think I'm confusing myself with my bank command here. Um, So why would that area be empty when we just did the thing that has been working? OK. 
Okay, pad message didn't get copied, so why wouldn't it? Or wait a second, wait a second. That's bank one. Let's come back. Okay. Yeah, pad message got copied. There's the 60 at the end of it. A little bit of it got clobbered when I used the when I used the monitor there, but it got copied. All right. Let's try this again. I, I'm goofing something up here. By getting confused with these bank commands. Okay, so at 1300, that's what we have. What do we have at FF00? That was weird. What the hell? Oh. Zero, okay, that means bank zero. Um, okay, let's go. Search for hello 250. Still empty. Why in the world? What am I doing wrong here? Now that's just the. That's just the screen memory that's in bank zero. So that's correct. That's what we expect to be there. There's pad message, copy part of it. What is going on here? Um, loading the file and then padding it. So pad message is doing its, or the, the first part here of pad message is doing its thing. It's getting it copied. So where is the trouble here? thinking it's something to do because this is the first time we've had a we've tried to go beyond 256 bytes so there's got to be something here that's having a problem with that I would think Well, let's um, let's do this instead of changing the code again. Let's just go over here, scratch hello two fifty. Yes, I'm sure. And then let's save hello two fifty with a shorter one. 17 bytes. And then run. Let's see. Let's go back to the bank. CPU. Okay. So, if I look at the directory now, hello 250s there. Should be 17 bytes long. Okay. Loaded it. Broke. There it is. Okay. Alright, so now without changing any of the code or even reloading the code, let's scratch. Let's just go up here. 
scratch Hello 250 again. Yeah, not sure if it did at that time. Is it already gone? Oh, I was in the monitor? Oh, of course I was. Alright, start over here. I'm out of practice at using a screen editor. Alright. So now, let's check. Well, that's bank one. Doesn't matter. Let's check our code is still here. We haven't changed anything. So let's save Hello 250, but this time let's go on up to FA. Okay. So now it's there, but now it's 250 bytes long, or maybe 251. And let's run again. Bank RAM 1, check at 400. Okay, that time it seems like it worked. I don't, I don't know what I was doing, what I was doing wrong there. Um, so let's check up to the end of the block. Okay, that looks good. Let's go, so it looks like here's our 251 bytes. It, did, it was 251. Um, there's our 251 bytes. There's our 1 bit. And it looks like it padded it out, so let's look further up to 53F. That should be the end of the next 64 byte block. And there it is. So there's 251 as the length of our file. Alright. So rather than change the code again, let's just keep doing this the way I've been doing it. Let's scratch it. just keep using the same file rather than the same file name rather than um, changing the file name in the code every time and uh, having to reassemble so let's save this time um, well I need to come back I do need to keep coming back to the to the right bank I think make that work correctly so this time let's make it a little bit more than 256 let's go past that to 260. That'd be 260 bytes right there. Alright. And then we can just run again. Okay. Look at RAM Bank 1. And if we go up to like we did before. Okay. So there's our 260 bytes right there there's the one bit and then it padded out and our length at the end then is 0104 which in hexadecimal means 260 and it's big endian because that's the way the SHA spec works so the big the high byte comes first um, okay it appears that the message padding all works. Um, now, one thing we need to check is back here in our code now. Uh, let's look at our includes. We want to make sure that file end then is pointing to the next byte. Basically, we want to make sure that file end and length are correct. So that's at 84 and 86. So back to the regular bank and then 84 87 okay so what do we got here okay so file end is at 4 is at 540 which is correct because our our padded out file goes to f goes to 53f right here that's 53f and so the very next byte is going to be 540 and the reason I have file end to go one byte past the end is just because of the way I envision it. As we walk through the blocks, we want to be able to compare the next address 
to file end and then say oh we're at the end stop here and so as soon as it tries to go to a block past the, the last block that's when it'll break out so that's correct and length right here is also correct now in this case within our program it's it's a little endy and just because that's simpler to, to keep just simpler to keep track of within our program um, okay so I would say all the message padding works and it seems to work for different sizes it works for little files it works for files that are just just big enough to need padding it works for when they when they cross over a page boundary looks like it all works um, all right so what would be next if, if the message padding works I honestly don't think I expected to be able to finish that in one session um, what do we have next to do well that's we set up the initial values pad the message actually I'm not sure if we did set up the initial values did we ever set up a thing to copy the initial hash values into place I don't know if we did don't think so unless that's part of init where is my init function oh yeah that's it right there init ah copies from hash values yeah okay that's fine do I ever call init ah yeah right there okay alright so we're loading the file and padding it so that it's padded and ready, but it's in bank one. Okay, now I remember what the next thing is to do. Um, but then before we go on to prep, because this stuff here all then needs to happen on each block, each 64-byte block of the message. Once it's padded out, it's an even you know it's an even multiple of 64 bytes and so then what we're gonna want to do is copy each block from bank one into the place in bank zero where we're gonna actually op operate on it and do these four things on it um, prep it um, actually I don't know if it hit Okay, I guess that is, I'll, I'll have to look at the spec and see, I, I seem to have the same thing being done in two places, and I'm not sure if that's correct, so I'm going to have to check that in the spec, I'll come back, I'll, I'll check that and come back to it, we're, we're almost in an hour here, so I'm probably not going to go ahead on this right now, but I just want to get, kind of get a plan, basically this, Okay, so this is done, this is done, by the way, don't forget my Patreon if you want to contribute to this project. Actually, I'll be contributing probably more to the farm project, but it's all, it's all the same thing as far as my time goes, so, um, but this one is going to be done before long, the farm one is going to go on for a long time, so, um, if you'd like to contribute to that, that's there. Um, so we still need to plan the display for this program, which I'm going to do on the 80 column display, just because that way our program can run at two two megahertz. And we need a copy routine. Now our copy routine is going to have to be like message pad or pad message in that it needs to work in the 200 space, because it's going to have to copy blocks 64 byte blocks from bank one into bank zero so that our program can then run on them in bank zero. That allows us to use basically al almost all of bank one just for our, our data, um, which is kind of one of the, one of the ideas is to, to be able to use the 128's extra RAM and really use it. Um, 
we could say, okay, we'll just copy it into bag zero, and then you know you can only do like a 50k file. But by putting it in bag one, we can we can do a 62.75k file, um, just taking out a little space for our shared memory. So we've got to write a copy routine that works like pad message, except it needs to leave 64 bytes to be the buffer for copying the the data over, because it needs to copy 64 bytes from bank one into that space that's shared, then switch to bank zero and copy those 64 bytes into, I think it's going to be C100, yeah, it's going to be here, or well, no, it's not going to be C100, it'll probably be D100, basically it just needs to be somewhere that then this computation stuff can work on it. Um, or, well, I guess it probably will be at C100, and then we'll just, we'll have to, because this right here, yeah. Yeah, that's how it'll be. It'll copy into C100, and then we'll just need to remove this step right here, copy the 64 bytes of the next block, because that'll already be getting done by our copy routine here. So, that will be the next step, is to do that copy routine, and then... After that, we've got to plan the display, and we've got to set up... Basically, what I envision for this is a, you run the program, it comes up and says, okay, SHA hash calculator, what do you want to get a hash for? And then you type in the file name, and it does its, you know, does its thing and says, here's the hash. And then it needs to give you the option of saving that hash in a file, because a hash is, you know... Is it... Um, how long I'm trying to try to remember how long it actually is in in hexadecimal if it's 64 characters I think well yeah yeah because we've got eight hash values each one is eight eight characters long in hex so you're not going to want to copy onto paper or something from your Commodore screen a 64 character hexadecimal you know line of nonsense so I want to be able to say okay you know, work on this file, and then would you like to save that hash? You know, give me a file name to save that hash in, and it'll save it on the disk. Um, so we're going to try to make a nice, a nice interface to run this thing um, once we've got it actually working on files. So that's going to be the plan. So uh, that's what we'll be working on next time. And hope this was interesting. And uh, thank you for watching.